Hey everyone, welcome to episode 36 of Heroic Nonsense, where we'll be doing a mini spotlight this week on Studio Series 86 Steeljaw, one of Blaster's original animal-based cassettes appearing most notably in the 86 Transformers movie. Grab a seat as I take you through all that is for this neat little Transformer, and stick around until the end for a few cartoon-based reproductions. I actually never had any of these original G1 cassettes for Blaster, preferring to collect all the Decepticon ones I could get my little hands on. However, I always liked this ferocious line based cassette the most out of the Autobot ones, and now wish I had asked my parents for him back in the day. Nevertheless, we have him now in his updated form, which I have to say is probably the best updated cassette to date, along with the recent Rumble and Frenzy releases. As a lion, I really dig the way they were able to recreate his mane, and I love those anime styled wings on his back. He's a hundred times better than the recent Ravage cassette, probably my favorite cassette character of all time, so here's hoping we see an 86 version of him soon that makes him look at least as good as Steeljaw. I'm always amazed when the designers can take something so small like a mini cassette and get something so 3D looking like in this case. He not only has this great mane, but also these cool side mounted lasers that are actually incorporated into the cassette itself. You also have this really nice face of the line that comes through quite well actually from all angles and that great big mane that fits into the design perfectly. I feel it's quite well proportioned for a cassette in animal form which is always a bonus. On the left side of the mane you also get a nice mini Autobot symbol which I love since I always felt that the faction symbols should be viewable in both modes of the character. It's mostly a yellow slash golden figure and really stands out nicely among the ranks. Now, not all of his robot line mode is contained in the cassette itself, with the wings and tail coming as a separate unit. Originally I was slightly bummed out about this, but then realized that the original cassettes all came this way. I also found a nice way to incorporate these extra bits of pieces into Blaster himself, which I'll show you shortly. Steeljaw also comes with this loudspeaker, which made an appearance in the G1 cartoon and an adapter. Finally, I love that Steeljaw's wings can move independently to create a more dynamic pose, as can his side mounted lasers. As for this loudspeaker accessory, you can also mount it on Steeljaw's back with that adapter. To be honest, I really don't care much for this accessory and is more of a nice to have for the sake of G1 cartoon nostalgia than anything else. The real way it's meant to be used is like so on Blaster himself. The one I'm using here is from the Legacy line who also came with a transparent eject cassette figure, though you can get the 86 version as well. Both can incorporate this loudspeaker on either of his fists. However, you really need two of these to reproduce the actual scene from the show, which is where this accessory came from. Hopefully the second one will come with Ram Horn when they decide to make him. When you add in the adapter, you can actually incorporate the speaker in a bunch of different ways. Here, Blaster's got a bit of a Megatron vibe going on by adding it to his forearm, which actually looks kind of cool as a bonus weapon for him. You can also incorporate it this way on the upper part of his arm, almost as some type of communications dish to be able to connect long distances with his Autobot comrade. A bonus idea, which is more of a throwaway, is to put it on Blaster's back and use it as some sort of jetpack. I admit it doesn't look the best here, but due to all the parts Blaster comes with, might as well have some fun with it. This loudspeaker and adapter actually adds a lot of playability to the figure. Overall, a great little cassette character with very nice design to add to the Autobot team, and making Steeljaw jump out this way is definitely a fun display idea. Onto the cassette alt form now, which I decided to display here with Blaster, since really on its own, there isn't much to speak about. I mean, after all, it is a mini cassette. You can also see one of the ways I incorporated the wing section as well as the adapter, which tucks away nicely on Blaster's back. Given the number of ports on Blaster, any other cassettes that they do make that will come with separate accessories should also likely fit on in similar ways. Now onto the burning question, does he fit into Blaster's chest? Yes, of course he does. Not only that, but given his colors and the way Blaster's cassette deck is designed, he actually looks really good in Blaster's chest. He does fit in very snugly though, which makes it a bit difficult to open the chest with the eject button on its own. However, once opened, you can have him ejecting in this way, which looks great for display purposes and is a way I will likely display our figure. I also prefer him way more than the eject figure that Blaster came with. The cassette itself is fine. As in all other recent Transformers cassette cases, he does only really have one side that can be visually considered a cassette. Some do it better than others, and Steel Jaw is probably one of the better ones, though it still isn't perfect. It even looks like you can see the actual tape in the window as was the case for real cassettes. You can also see the reels themselves. As for the other side, nothing really there to make you think it's a cassette tape other than possibly the shape. Anyway, it's meant to be shown in the host figure itself with one side showing only, so I'm generally fine with it. I think the original G1 cassettes captured the tape feel way better though. 
Now as for the wing section that is meant to be placed on Steel Jaws back when in lion mode, it can't be stored along with the cassette in the chest. So we need to come up with some more creative ways of keeping this piece nearby, one of which is placing it on his blaster like so. If you want it a bit more hidden, you can place it on the inside of the weapon as well, which looks like it isn't even there from this angle. A close up showing how it could add a nice aesthetic to the laser as well, especially with the wing section opened. As I showed earlier, it can be placed on blasters back like so. Given the colors, it's almost unnoticeable this way. I actually really like this look, a sort of blend of a shoulder guard as well as an insignia or medal of sorts. Again, because of the colors, this actually looks right at home on Blaster in most configurations. Alright, onto the transformation. So let's start by taking the cassette out of Blaster. Like I said earlier, it's very snug, so you gotta really pull it out. Let's move Blaster aside. And what we'll start with is the head and main portion. So what you'll do is pull out these parts over here which form the head. They're pretty tight. And then you're just going to squeeze the front portion of the cassette together and there you have the head and main and then you just lift this up 90 degrees. Now as for the legs and the back, you're going to lower the back legs like so which have the lasers on them. You do each side and then before lifting up the lasers, let's put the front legs down. Let's do the other side. And then what we'll do is just lift up these lasers, which are connected to the back legs, like so, on both sides. This one's a little tighter. There you go. And that's the way he looks without his wing section. And now we'll just grab that wings and tail section and place it in the tab and there you have him transformed into his lion form looks really really nice we can now take off his wings and instead replace it with the adapter right in the same spot and this is used for the loudspeaker it has a little tab right here and just fit it in you could put it on Steel Jaws back like so, if that's something you want to do. Okay, so now let's transform him back. We'll take these pieces off. And we basically do the opposite of what we did in the first place. So we'll close this laser down, and the same for the other side. So we'll line it up directly with the back legs. And then we'll push up the front legs 90 degrees on both sides and then now we can push up the back legs that fit right in and we'll go back down to the head and main flip it down open it up and we'll push in each side of the head and there you go the cassette is transformed As for the 86 movie character cassettes, these are the two that I have for the Autobots. They generally line up and you can see how small they are next to Blaster. I prefer the updated versions of 86 Rumble and Frenzy versus Eject, but again, Steel Jaw fits right in perfectly with those two. We do have another Autobot cassette, Knock, coming from the Generation Select's 4-pack Soundwave Spy Patrol. A bit confusing since he's been labeled different ways by Hasbro as either a Decepticon or an Autobot. And even though he looks like a cassette and can fit into Blaster or Soundwave's chest, he is technically a Power Master character and often meant to be used as such with Double Dealer, and in fact can connect with the Earthrise version of that figure. For our purposes here, let's assume he's an Autobot cassette. This is a nice little setup and display as it has a bunch of different cassettes from various sources, including the ones that came with Soundwave and Blaster, as well as the Generation Selects 4-pack. The only one I'm missing is Ratbat that came in a Siege 2-pack with Rumble, which I missed, and the recent Buzzsaw that came with Legacy United Soundwave. I also did not show my Frenzy that came with the 4-pack as I don't particularly like that mold, and we have him in the updated 86 release. And for fun, I wanted to show my original 80s watch transforming figure here in black. He fits right into this line and type of figures, so I figured I'd add this bonus in for your viewing pleasure. And now with their cassette player masters, Blaster and Soundwave. And what a nice display this makes. Once they hopefully update the remainder of the cassettes for the 86 line, this will look amazing. I do hope they make a new Soundwave for the Studio Series 86 line.
I showed Steeljaw transformed into the cassette and inside Blaster's robot mode. So here Blaster is in his boombox mode. The cassette looks great inside here as well. You can also add the speaker that comes with Steeljaw in this way. Less ports to play around with, but makes sense to use it in this fashion. And a quick look at how he looks transformed next to Blaster in boombox mode, which also looks very cool. And with the watch transformed again for fun. As for the cassettes, Steeljaw is here next to his cassette brother Eject, generally the same size. And here next to Shattered Glass Rewind in red, which you can throw in as another Autobot cassette if you'd like, or make up an entirely new character. One more shot of the watch, next time perhaps I'll do a mini review of this and our red one. And all the cassettes we have to date from the various recent Transformers lines, minus Frenzy again from the 4-pack. Visually quite nice to display this way. And in case you were wondering what he might look like in a G1 blaster, here he is. And he does fit in, though plenty of room inside as the cassettes are smaller than the originals. Still looks quite good though in case you only have or want the G1 version of blaster. And to end it all off, a quick shot of the front of the pack. I like the image they used at the top of the pack, really nice take on the character. As promised, just a few scenes from the G1 cartoon and movie for your entertainment. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this shorter review of this minifigure. Was a fun one and a great little character and toy to spotlight. If you enjoyed this video, then please like it. And I hope I earned your subscription if you haven't already subscribed. See you all next episode. And remember, it's all such heroic nonsense in the end. Transform!